Although both had great respect and affection for each other, the unpredictable Django and the more reliable Stefan were two very different persons, and their relationship was at times hard to sustain. However, Grappelli was always patient, as he had very clear ideas about his partner's talent and his effect on the other musicians. Django was a genius, said the violin player, and was always ahead of his time. Guitarists were terrified of him. Germany, the quintet saw the first signs announcing the coming war. And in 1939, when war was finally declared, they were playing in London. Django was so terrified by the possibility of a raid over England that he hurriedly went back to Paris without telling anybody. Grappelli completed the London gig, but then Hitler invaded Paris. The violinist was forced to stay in England, and thus the quintet was broken. Its two big stars wouldn't see each other again until liberation. In Paris, Django formed a new group with clarinetist Hubert Rostang. Inspired by the modernist discs he had heard of Benny Goodman playing with electric guitar genius Charlie Christian. With all the American jazzmen gone, Django became the most revered jazz star in occupied France. In 1945, the same day the war ended, Grappelli, who was still in London, received a long-distance call from Django. They soon reunited again and recorded a poignant swing version of La Marseillaise. Paris' success had encouraged Django to try his luck in the United States. Thus, in 1946, he accepted Duke Ellington's invitation and crossed the Atlantic.
dreams of being acclaimed in America didn't come true. His performances were well received, but he, who spoke no English at all, didn't feel comfortable in American society and soon came back to France. You see, brother, he declared soon after, I prefer being the first in Rome to the second in Kansas City. However, it was completely obvious for everybody that he felt humiliated and considered the trip to be a personal failure. In fact, the cultural distance was even bigger. Not only could he not speak English, he could just read acceptably and barely write in French. Django had never attended school and was completely illiterate until adulthood when Stefan Grappelli taught him some reading and writing rudiments. There are only a few extant documents showing Django's writing. One of them is a greeting card dedicated to a bar owner. The longer one is a letter he wrote with big childish calligraphy to Stefan during his American trip. Writing continued to be a mystery for him. When he saw sax player André Ekian typing fast on a typewriter without looking at the keyboard, he asked him admiringly, however do you get the right letters? And however do you get the right notes? quipped Ekian. I see what you mean, added Django, with a shy smile. Although other musicians had to transcribe his ideas, Django was a brilliant composer author of dozens of tunes that have since become jazz standards, like Manoir de Mes Rêves, Blues Claire, Djangology, and above all, the wonderful Nuage. 